Hey, Peepsy Doodles. So I had a few people that requested yesterday when I was on my Instagram live that I start doing some herbal videos um, going over some of the correspondences that I'm learning about while I'm doing my Green Witch Living course. So I was like, well, absolutely. And so after I got a hold of Feather to make sure that she didn't mind if I shared all of the stuff that I've been learning um, and all the research that I've been done, and she said, absolutely, go right ahead. So that's what I'm going to do. So my hope is, because um, every two weeks I choose a new herb, um, and so I'll have 24 by the end of the course. You could do one herb a month or two herbs a month. And of course, me being the Aries that I am, I chose two herbs a month. So I finished lavender. So that's what we're going to talk about today. And then my next herb that I am halfway through with is chamomile. And so once that's done, I'll post um, an herbal correspondence video on chamomile and we'll go on from there. So I got my notes right here in my notebook. So I figured I'd go through all this with you guys. And so we're going to go over, um, you know, the different names, the different correspondences, folklore and history, um, you know, planting type things of it, magical uses, different spells you can do with it, um, and then herbal uses and different herbal remedies that you can use it for. Now, please understand before I start any of this that you're going to want to do your own research before you ingest anything. Lavender is normally a pretty safe herb to ingest, um, but you know, if you're pregnant or um, you have small children, you'll just want to do your research before you go ahead and start eating any kind of herbs. So, I put that out there. Okay, so we're gonna go over lavender. So lavender is actually part of the mint family, which I know I feel like a lot of people don't know. There are um, 39 different species of lavender. Um, the main ones that we talk about um, are Lavendula officinalis, Lavendula vera, and Lavendula Augusti augustifolia. Excuse me, because my Latin's not good. Um, folk names behind Latin are Spike, Elf Ear, and Spike Nard. Um, also, as I'm going through this, I am still learning all of this, and I'm still writing things down. So if you guys have other information on lavender that you know, I would love to hear it in the comments. Okay, anyway. Um, so after doing a little bit of research, um, there was a couple places, like in Scott Cunningham's book, that talks about lavender being a feminine plant. And while on the surface it seems like lavender would be feminine, um, I felt that lavender was masculine, especially since lavender is of the air family or the air element. And usually air elements produce masculine plants as far as like whether a plant is receptive or projective. <clears throat> So, um, for air, it's masculine, it's projective, the direction's east, ruling planets are Mercury, Jupiter, um, the colors for air, white, pale yellow, blue, purple, gray, so you've got the blue and purple in there, and so they're usually lightweight in appearance, fresh, clean, aromatic fragrance, um, they grow quickly, they have a prolific growing habit, so, and then, um, their qualities, you know, life connection, knowledge, wisdom, communication, and purification, which are actually really big qualities of lavender. So, for me, lavender is a masculine plant. The chakras of the third eye, deities, um, Selene, Hermes, and Hecate. So, folklore. I had a ton of fun learning about lavender's different folklore. So, um, in Latin, laver or lavar means to wash so lavender. Um, they used to add it to bath water to purify the mind and body. Clothes were washed in rivers and then laid on lavender bushes to dry in the calming effect of the scent that was infused into their clothing after they wore it when it was dried um, was noted when the clothes were worn, hence them figuring out that lavender had that calming, relaxing effect to its scent. 
Ancient Egyptians used it in cosmetics, perfume, and in the mummification process, which I've also found out with chamomile was used in the mummification process. So I am dying to do some more research on how exactly these herbs were used. In 77 AD, there was a Greek physician that was noted for its use, in, or that noted its use for digestion, headaches, sore throats, and antiseptic properties when used for wounds and burns. And of course, at the end of this, I do have a little biography back here of the different things that I used when I was doing my research. Um, bundles of dried lavender were given to women during childbirth to squeeze during contractions and the scent released would help to calm and soothe them, which I was like, dude, if I have another kid, you better get me some lavender. <laughs> the Bible referred to lavender as spikenard. So, excuse me, apparently if any of you ever read the Bible and it says spikenard, it is referring to lavender. Um, sprigs of lavender were hung over doors for protection. Now, that's one thing that I never really thought about with lavender before I started re doing research on it was the fact that it is an extremely protective herb. It is used a ton in protective protection spells, protection sachets, that type of thing. So, I guess maybe I'm the last one to know that, but I just did not. I, I didn't know that. I just didn't. Um, English farmers would wear lavender under their hats to ward off sunstroke and headache. Oh, more history. Oh boy. In the Middle Ages, lavender was a favorite among royalty. They washed their furniture and linens with a lavender wash, and they sprinkled lavender water over their lover's head, and it was said to keep them faithful. In the 1920s, a French perfumist, I'm not even going to try that name, it's Rene Maurice something, burned his arm and plunged it into the nearest liquid, which happened to be lavender essential oil. He was surprised by the pain relief and how quickly his hand healed in the following days. So having said that, going right into herbal actions and indications. So lavender is a nervine, um, which means it helps with the nerves. It's an anti-spasmodic anti so spasms, more nervous system type things, antimicrobial, antibacterial, and a tonic. Um, and tonic means it is used for basically overall general health. It's used for, here we go, you ready for this? I don't know if you're ready for this. Burns, stings, headache, coughs, cold, calming, anxieties, and tension, which I feel like most of us know, relaxation and insomnia and stress, which we all know, Bug bites, digestive aid, gas remedies, skin care, yeast infections, seasonal allergies, menstrual cramps, skin irritation, athlete's foot, muscle cramps, diaper rash, postpartum, and sunburn. And the oil, if you use lavender oil, is great for fungus, burns, wounds, eczema, and acne. Contraindications is generally safe, but it may people may have sensitivity issues with the oil topically. So if you're going to use the actual concentrated lavender oil, usually the essential oil is one that's pretty safe to just put on without diluting, but you're gonna wanna test it on a very small area of skin before you do, because maybe you're one of those people that will have a reaction to it. Um, and with anything ever, if you're pregnant um, or breastfeeding, you're gonna wanna check with you're going to want to do your research or check with your doctor. Um, most of the things that I read said that lavender was one that was relatively safe during pregnancy. It's safe for, you know, children. It's But do your research because there were other places that said that it had like a list of pregnancy herbs and lavender was not on it. So do your research. Um, the growth habitat and parts used. So obviously the parts that are used are the flowers whether it be dry or fresh. Um, it's a perennial, sh a perennial shrub. A lot of people just think of um, lavender when you see them as just like these tall, beautiful flowers. It's actually like a hardy, woody shrub. Um, and it's, so you have to use well draining soil in the full sun, which is why I think that mine has not been coming up and I haven't been doing well with it because I have been overwatering them bitches for like the last Two years and they just have not been working so hopefully this year I can plant them in a different area and they will do a little bit better. You sow in early spring, flowers in midsummer, 
they're like a pale mauve color foliage is narrow and a gray green color cut back after flowering grows in 90 to 200 days if started from seed and it is native to the Mediterranean region, which I did not know, especially in France. And it thrives in arid climates and low humidity, full sun, dry soil, hardy in zones five through nine. I didn't know that. I was growing it wrong. That's why it never took it in any of my in any of my seeds that I did. It just couldn't. I could not get lavender to sprout to save my life. Um, the last couple of years, I literally just went and bought lavender plants that were already established, and I still barely got anything from them because I didn't have them in full sun and I was way over watering them. So we're gonna try different this year. Applications, so once again, here we go into the herbal remedies. Please do your research. Like I said, lavender is normally a relatively safe herb. Um, D Tiptoe Chick has videos up on lavender, but um, you know, so you're more than welcome to go check those out as well. But um, tea for ingestion. This is how I make my tea. Um, me personally, I use a half a teaspoon per cup of like per mug of water and I steep it for five minutes, five to six minutes, but no more than that. And I have found that it does not have that overly floral bitter taste when I do that. There are some recipes that I saw call for like three tablespoons of lavender and steep for 10 minutes. And I'm like, do you like wanna die? Because that will be bitter as all hell. The longer that you steep lavender, the more bitter that it gets. Um, and so if you don't want that bitter floral note to your tea, I do half a teaspoon per cup for five minutes. And it is very tasty. And you can drink up to three cups per day. And then um, if you're using it for wounds, you can do quite a bit more. Um, this says one to three teaspoons, but I think it's actually one to three tablespoons and you steep for 10 minutes. Um, you know, I did this, my husband cut himself pretty bad when he was putting up my grow room downstairs for my herbs. And I did a pretty strong infusion of lavender. I soaked a rag in it and then I wrapped it around his finger and, um, you know, the healing that took place overnight was pretty astounding, actually. If you're going to use a tincture, um, a half to two milliliters three times a day of a one to five ratio tincture. So in tinctures, you can look up tinctures, but it's where you soak the herbs in alcohol and let them steep for six weeks. So... Um, different herbal remedies. You can soak a cloth in lavender tea or infusion and press to a minor wound or burn for several minutes, which is what I just said we did. You can make it into a salve using olive oil or lavender tincture and beeswax to use for sunburn, dry skin, bug bites, cuts, scrapes, burns, okay. burns, relaxation, and it helps with insomnia. So there are countless numbers of herbal remedies that you can look up for lavender. Um, these are just the ones that I have uh, tried and that I'm working on right now. Magical uses. Let's get into some magical uses because this is what you guys are here for, aren't you? I mean, don't lie to me. I know that's what you're here for. So some stuff that we pretty much know already. Lavender is great for love spells and love sachets, 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 whatever the hell you want to call them. Um, the flowers are burned or smoldered to induce sleep, which we know. Scattered about the home, it helps to remain, maintain peace and um, halt fighting and arguing, keep a peaceful atmosphere in the home. They're used in spells to promote happiness. So, protection. Lavender is usually hung above doors to protect the home and it's also used in protection spells. Um, purification, it's often used in purification baths and, um, you know, if you have bath sachets, sachets, um, a lot of times you will find if you have a purification blend, lavender will be the main herb in there. Fertility spells, um, you know, I, uh, lavender was one of the main herbs that I used in my Ostara ritual blend 
one of the reasons being that lavender is not only great for purification and protection, but it's great for fertility, which is one of the main things that Ostara is great for. It wards against the evil eye, so another protective quality. And this one I thought was fun. It's used to attract ghosts, spirits, and other benevolent entities. So while it's used to protect you against malevolent spirits, malevolent energies, negative shit, it's also used to attract and to help communicate, which is where that air quality comes in, you know, um, communication. It opens up communication for spirits and ghosts, which I think is awesome. So the only thing that I have written down, obviously, for spells, so the spells section here I have been using for things that I personally have been um, working with. So I put in the eggshell protection blend, which I did a video on. You guys know all about it. You're more than welcome to go check that out. And then I also have um, Aria's Monster Spray. And the reason that I have that is because not only is lavender safe to spray around your kid's room, but it actually is a protective spray. You know, it's not just a spray for your kids to have uh, more peace of mind. It is actually a protective thing. So um, I put that in there because me and my daughter made it and it's 100% spell worthy. Okay, so some of the resources that I used, I have some of them here. I think I have some of them here. They might be over there. Um, so prescription for her, for herbal, ooh, stuff over here. Um, prescription, prescription for herbal healing by Phyllis A. Balk. So I used this one. Um, the New Age Herbalist. By Richard maybe I remember that this one was recommended by D so I used this one um, magical herbalism must be over there um, oh the magical herbalism book by Scott Cunningham is over there that I used encyclopedia of magical herbs by Sc Scott Cunningham is over there um, and then I also used um, hillsboroughhomesteading.com slash medicinal plant profile lavender and um, magicalrecipesonline.com. So I will put all of this information down in the description if you guys uh, want to know exactly what I use to do on my research. And like I said, all of this is ongoing. So as I continue to learn more and do more with Lavender, I will continue to update these profiles. But as of right now, that is what I have for the herb of Lavender. And um, in a couple weeks, when I'm all done with chamomile, I'll do the same thing. If it's something you guys are interested, interested in, if you're like, um, I don't really care to hear you blabber for 20 minutes about herbs, then let me know. And I won't do another one, and that's totally cool. It's a new thing we're trying, so if you like it, let me know down below. If Give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, let me know that too. So, cool. And um, another thing, I mentioned this yesterday. Um, I have a link for it down in the description. I have been posting the actual pictures of my um, correspondence pages as I have been finishing them over on my Patreon. So, um, I know that we are all really tight on finances right now. So, you are not going to hurt my feelings if you don't want to. But if it's anything that you want to keep um, keep up with, I do have these and they get posted every time I finish them over on my Patreon page as long as well as other magical tidbits that I have been doing throughout the year. So that link is down in my description as well. So I hope you guys have an awesome day. I hope that you learned a little bit of something about lavender and I hope you go get you some of this amazing herb and get you get you some do some things with it right now i've got i drink lavender tea i have a lavender infused oil that's brewing um that i want to make a salve with and we made lavender lemon cookies we had a lot of fun with lavender and so now it's time to have lots of fun with chamomile so hope you guys have an awesome day and i will see you later